Thank you very much. I was going to give myself 15 minutes. I'm giving myself 10 minutes, so I'm putting it on nine here to give me, myself a warning. Thank you very much. Uh, for yesterday, let me say that my, my wife and I make lists of things, and from yesterday we made we put Montenegro on the list of most beautiful countries of the world on the top. I think it was absolutely stunning yesterday. Thank you very much. Um, when I ride my bike home in the afternoon from work in Uppsala, I see often a man, a beggar of Roma descent. Uh, we talked, uh, he's outside a store where I stop and buy things sometime on the way home. We talked the other day, we talked now and then, and he asked me three questions. Uh, can I, as a beggar from, Euro from Europe, can I be prohibited by your country to beg in your country? Can there be a law against begging? And the second question, can I be thrown out of your country because I'm begging here, or can I not? And the third country, can I, uh, the third question, can I sue my homeland uh, and win a lawsuit against my homeland because they are forcing me to beg and do not give me good living conditions? Well, I decided that for this conference, which is to deal with vulnerable persons, I would talk about the most vulnerable ones, the beggars. Uh, and one reason for this is that since about a year now, I see every day people begging. Uh, it happens on the way to work, uh, it happens all over Stockholm, and it happens almost all over Uppsala. Since about a year, there are many, many beggars in Sweden and some other countries in Northern Europe, and they most of the time come from Southeastern Europe. Most of them are of a Roma descent. My wife and I have been traveling around uh, the Balkan states um, for two weeks, a little more than two weeks now, and we see beggars here and there, but not at all as many as we see in Sweden, where they have practically invaded us. And needless to say, this has brought along a lot of discussion. Some say, should they really be allowed to be beg in the streets all over the place? They are a disturbance. Others say, this gives us something to think about. Uh, just throwing these people out of the country or prohibiting them from begging is, can't be a good solution. So there's also a moral issue in this. Should one give money or not? Should the beggars be given shelters in our countries? Should they be allowed to stay everywhere in their caravans or out in the woods at least? Shouldn't their home country take care of them so that they don't need to beg? Should we show them dislike or pity or sympathy? Should they be ignored, observed at least, or maybe highlighted in our discussion? Uh, from a international law perspective, there are at least two uh, interesting questions to ask ourselves. Is it perhaps a human right to be able to beg in the streets if you really need it to feed your children? Is it a human right? If it is, each country cannot legislate against begging, you know, cannot forbid it. And the second question is, is it rather a human right not to be forced into something so degrading as begging? What is the role of international law in dealing with extreme poverty? Could international law, for example, and should international law play a role in forcing some countries to improve the situations of people who live under humiliating circumstances. The main legal instruments, I will cut this short, to deal with this are the Universal Declaration on Human Rights, the UN, where in Article 25.1 it says basically that there is a right for everyone to a standard of living adequate for the health and well-being of himself and his family. Almost the same is being said in the International Covenant on Economic, Social, and Cultural Rights from 1966, entered into force in 1976. There it says in Article 11.1, there is a right of everyone to an adequate standard of living for himself and his family. 
the Council of Europe Convention on Human Rights, which has been mentioned here a couple of times already, well, the others have also. There it states in Artic it is stated in Article 3, no one should be subjected to degrading treatment, if I make it short. No one should be subjected to degrading treatment. And in Article 8.1, everyone has the respect, has the right to respect for his private and family life. And then I want to mention also the EU Free Movement Directive, where it says that in Article 6, that there is a right of residence for up to three months for union citizens, for up to three months without any conditions or any formalities. Now, there is a prerequisite that these people do not become an unreasonable burden, as it says in Article 14.1, on the social assistance system of the host member state. And there is also one other prerequisite, one other possibility for a member state to refuse EU citizens access to their countries. This is if, if there are sufficient grounds of public policy, public security, or public health. Well, could the beggars be thrown out on these grounds? These rules are in Article 27. And it says there also that the personal conduct of the individual concerned must represent a genuine, present, and sufficiently serious threat affecting one of the fundamental interests of society. Only then can the person be, be thrown out of the country. Uh, there is obviously not much case law uh, on this. In the US, uh, a constitutional court has said that it is contradictory to the, to the uh, right to free speech to prohibit beggars from, from holding up signs saying, help me. So you need to, in America, give beggars at least this right to hold up the sign, help me. Uh, in the European Court for Human Rights, there's a case from 2005 concerning uh, Romania, Moldovan and others versus Romania, where some Roma people lived under, for some years, under really, really bad conditions. This was degrading treatment, and uh, Romania was uh, violating uh, Article 3 of the Human Rights Convention. To summarize, because I see I now have two minutes left to make it 10. To summarize, begging is probably protected by EU law in the sense that the beggars cannot be thrown out of the European countries, the EU countries, and the EEA countries, including, for example, Norway. Uh, but other than that, it is not a human right to beg unless you can show that you really need it to live. I am cutting this really short now. This can be discussed in, at length. These are my own, uh, uh, what, I, what I find myself, my own conclusions. It is uh, not a human right also to be protected from begging, but it is a human right to be protected from the very worst living conditions to cut it very short. So my response to the man outside the store when I come back home will be, there we are, one more minute. Uh, my response will be, yes, you can be prohibited to beg in Sweden. I, I know that the Swedish legislator will not be doing this, but it's not a human right to beg. The second question, no, you cannot be thrown out of our country because you're begging. It's the EU directive on free movement says you cannot be thrown out. And third, no, don't sue your homeland. You will probably lose unless you can show that it's a prerequisite for you to beg if, you're to be, if you are to be able to live and support your family. That will be my answers. Thank you very much for your attention.